Is Mansa Musa the richest man who ever lived? Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world. With an estimated fortune of US$188.7 billion he is the wealthiest man in modern history. But he is by no means the richest man of all time. That title is believed to belong to Mansa Musa, the 14th century West African ruler who was so rich his generous handouts wrecked an entire country's economy. Mansa Musa was richer than anyone could describe, Jacob Davidson wrote about the African king for money.com in 2015. In 2012, US website Celebrity Net Worth estimated his wealth at $400 bn, but economic historians agree that his wealth is impossible to pin down to a number. The Golden King Mansa Musa was born in 1280 into a family of rulers. His brother, Mansa Abu Bakr, ruled the empire until 1312, when he abdicated to go on an expedition. According to 14th century Syrian historian Shibab al Amari, Abu Bakr was obsessed with the Atlantic Ocean and what lay beyond it. He reportedly embarked on an expedition with a fleet of 2,000 ships and thousands of men, women, and they sailed off, never to return. Some, like the late American historian Ivan Van Sertema, entertain the idea that they reached South America. But there is no evidence of this. In any case, Mansa Musa inherited the kingdom he left behind. Under his rule, the kingdom of Mali grew significantly. He annexed 24 cities, including Timbuktu. The kingdom stretched for about 2,000 miles, from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to modern-day Niger. Taking in parts of what are now Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea and Ivory Coast. Map of Mali Empire. With such a large land mass came great resources such as gold and salt. During the reign of Mansa Musa, the empire of Mali accounted for almost half of the old world's gold, according to the British Museum. And all of it belonged to the king. The journey to Mecca. Though the empire of Mali was home to so much gold, the kingdom itself was not well known. This changed when Mansa Musa, a devout Muslim, decided to go on a pilgrimage to Mecca, passing through the Sahara Desert and Egypt. He took his entire royal court and officials, soldiers, griots, entertainers, merchants, camel drivers and, as well as a long train of goats and sheep for food. It was a city moving through the desert. A city whose inhabitants were clad in gold brocade and finest Persian silk. A hundred camels were in tow, each camel carrying hundreds of pounds of pure gold. It was a sight to behold. And the sight got even more opulent once the caravan reached Cairo, where they could really show off their wealth. The Cairo Gold Crash Mansa Musa left such a memorable impression on Cairo that Al Amari, who visited the city twelve years after the Malian king, recounted how highly the people of Cairo were speaking of him. So lavishly did he hand out gold in Cairo that his three-month stay caused the price of gold to plummet in the region for ten years, wrecking the economy. On his way back home, Mansa Musa passed through Egypt again, and according to some, tried to help the country's economy by removing some of the gold from circulation by borrowing it back at extortionate interest rates from Egyptian lenders. Others say he spent so much that he ran out of gold. Education at heart. There is no doubt that Mansa Musa spent, or wasted, a lot of gold during his pilgrimage. But it was this excessive generosity that also caught the eyes of the world. Mansa Musa had put Mali and himself on the map, quite literally. In a Catalan atlas map from 1375, a drawing of an African king sitting on a golden throne atop Timbuktu, holding a piece of gold in his hand became very popular. Timbuktu became an African El Dorado and people came from near and far to have a glimpse. In the 19th century, it still had a mythical status as a lost city of gold at the edge of the world, a beacon for both European fortune hunters and explorers, and this was largely down to the exploits of Mansa Musa 500 years earlier. 
Mansa Musa returned from Mecca with several Islamic scholars, including direct descendants of the Prophet Muhammad and an Andalusian poet and architect by the name of Abu Shas Saheli, who is widely credited with designing the famous Jinga Reba Mosque. The king reportedly paid the poet 200 kilograms, 440 pounds, in gold, which in today's money would be 8.2 million dollars, 6.3 million pounds. In addition to encouraging the arts and architecture, he also funded literature and built schools, libraries and mosques. Timbuktu soon became a center of education and people traveled from around the world to study at what would become the Sankor University. The rich king is often credited with starting the tradition of education in West Africa, although the story of his empire largely remains little known outside West Africa.